So we are live. Welcome to another episode of Keeping It Real with Hayley and Leanne. Um, I'm Hayley. I'm Leanne. And that's Leanne. Um, and today we've been women and are in about what we're going to do is podcast on and we've decided fear. Um, it can be related to current times as well. Um, but yeah, so today we're going to talk about um, fear, um, our experiences, um, the um, the physical experiences as well, I'm going to include, mm. because um, yeah, fear is huge. And actually some people are not sure when we speak about fear, some people, like I've had uh, clients that assume that fear is just fear of spiders, um, fear of, uh, you know, um, phobias etc but actually um like we spoke before we got on the call it could be very unconscious and we're not even aware it's fear so yeah so hopefully um we will um come across clear <laughs> yeah that'd be helpful wouldn't it <laughs> yeah so Leah, what's your understanding of um fear well, um, my understanding of fear is, well, I see it as rational fear and irrational fear. So, um, you know, rational fear for me is like, say, right now, my flat was on fire. Then there'll be rational fear that I need to get people safe, da -da -da, get the dog, da -da 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 -da, get outside, phone the fire brigade, but there would be absolute fear running through me because I've got my, the, the, like the thought comes in, you've got to do something, blah, blah, blah. Then you get the, the cluster thoughts blah, 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 and then that wisdom comes up and then you're on it. And that's rational fear. Like, you know, you with, um, if you are about to be attacked or anything else, that's rational fear. Irrational fear is when your mind goes into overload of thinking about doing something and then that over analytical mind that logical mind of making stuff up of case scenarios and then before you know it you're kind of talking yourself out of doing something because you've got an irrational fear of like for example I'll give an example to explain it um I love singing and dancing I do actually um and um but to do that in front of um say so, so I said Leanne you um you need to sing a song to an audience <laughs> uh, um that my irrational the irrational fear would be standing up humiliating myself then I'll be like oh my god I'm gonna be no good so then and blah 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 blah. but I love singing I've been told I'm good at singing blah blah blah, blah. but that doesn't matter because that would go out the, the fear would be of public humiliation uh, what's the worst that's going to happen to me I'm not going to fall down dead I'm just going to be out of tune um some people might say she's rubbish I mean but it, it, it's, it's, it's um it's an irrational fear of you know anything that is going to bother me or hurt me ego or you know, so like yesterday, I'll give a good example of irrational fear. I went back swimming in the cold water, open water swimming. Um, I didn't swim. I dipped and just moved around a bit for five minutes. <laughs> um, as I walked into the water like, beforehand, mouth was dry. I know what to expect. So I've done it before. But there was still fear of walking into six degrees cold water. There's nothing that's going to happen to me other than being cold and getting wet. If I if I if I stay in there long too long, yeah, hypothermia does kick in. But it was irrational how I was behaving. My whole physical body, as soon as I got into my waist, paralysed. I was completely in the, and I was really concentrating on my breath, going into a meditative state, like exhaling a lot, and. If you know, and what's going to happen to me? Nothing's going to happen to me. I had two gorgeous friends with me that were supporting me on getting into the water, but my whole physical body paralyzed. And all I had to do was get in. That's all I had to do. <laughs> but this fear was just like, I was like, that. I can't move. Oh my God. Yeah. Anyway, so then I remember looking at my friend and just going, Count to three. And she's just like, 
she's in. Both of them are in. And because I hadn't been in for 10 weeks, and I knew it was going to be a lot colder than before then. So then the fear was just, I can't get in. I can't get out to three. So like one, two, three, and I just thought, oh, won't swear, but I was like, I'll sod it or whatever. It's in one mind, would be a bit stronger language than that. And I just did it. And then it was just like, then I'm just coping on uh, regulating my breath and la, la, la. nothing happened to me, but the fear was intense. Yeah. It was so intense. It was like, yeah, and the paralysis kicked in, but I know I'm, I'm blowing, I'm going off course, and I am, Hayley, but no, you're not. for me, it is, no, you're not. it is, <laughs> bless you. So for me, it is that rational and irrational fear, but then you have the unconscious fear, you know, the, the fear that, you don't even know you're in fear. You know, you, you might have experienced something that was not too pleasant in the past. Example, we'll take relationships, right? So there's stuff that's happened in relationships before. Um, then you do a, a massive amount of healing on yourself. And then uh, you have fear of not trusting yourself or going through that pain again. Or and, But you don't think you're actually, no, because I've, I've healed myself, blah, 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 blah. But then but that little bit of fear still runs and it comes up and you can feel it. You can feel it. And I've got it's like a thought cluster, a cluster of thoughts that go. <laughs> so um, that would be how I would see explain fear is irrational, rational and totally unconscious. Well, we're done because we're done. That's the podcast done. <laughs> no. What? Um, I said, no, joking. But how oh. you explained it was spot on. <laughs> I was like, eh? what's happening? <laughs> so how you explained it was spot on. You know, we've got the you, you, the rash, like the rational fear of fire falling. Um, you know, if you're if you're <laughs> hanging from a building, you're going to be in fear. Um, <laughs> no, we're not, Sorry, done. we're not done. We're not done. Um, <laughs> They were far from done, Hayley, come on. But as you was talking, um, what popped in my head is, um, it, you know, it's sp- like with fear. So uh, it's yeah, it's 100% the stuff we make up. So I'm going to give an example because I always relate to examples. So when I woke up this morning, um, <laughs> we're doing a podcast on fear and I had fear. Yeah. Um, so I'd really like intense fear when I was like, Ugh. like, you know, that freeze that, you know, you got the fight, flight, <laughs> freeze. Um, freeze, that's the word. Freeze, yes. Yeah. So I froze Ooh. and um, and then that led to actually um, me feeling a little bit down. And I was like, what is going on? And um, it, obviously then it hit. So I was making up stuff about myself, um, making up stuff about other people um that they could judge me um etc cetera, etc cetera. um now if I wasn't aware I would probably roll with that and then make an excuse this morning you know I might say mm. do you know what Leanne I've not slept well tonight um let's do it another day and I'd get a temporary re- relief <laughs> but then what would happen is I know what would happen with myself personally I would then make stuff up about me um that I couldn't <laughs> do this and then I'd be saying, oh, you're, you're crap, you're, um, you're, you know, you've got no courage, not rash. I wouldn't be able to hear this. This would all be going blah, 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 you know, like the mm-hmm. yeah. storm. Um, and it would just be like a big vicious circle. Um, because one, I'd be feeling out of, I'd be thinking I'm out of control, which I would be with other people, what they thought of me. Um, you know, that is out of my control. Um, but I find fear when you fear for me is when you feel out of control when you don't trust in yourself. If you don't trust in yourself, um, you're just gonna be going with it. And um, mm. for years, Leanne, I didn't have a clue what fear was. Actually, until I met Greg and yourself, when mm. I when it all become a little bit clearer because you were asking me the right questions, and yeah. pet, petrified keep, kept on coming up. And I didn't know that was fear. I just thought, oh, that's because I ain't got no confidence. Oh, that's because I'm shy. That's because, um, <laughs> so making all this stuff up. But actually the mm. truth was I was in complete fear and it's normally related to um, something outside of me, whether that be a person. Yes. Yeah, so whether that be a person, whether that be um, 
for it's normally people isn't it um what other people could you know um do or say um all, all this stuff and make up but my point is is I wasn't even aware that I had fear for years wasn't even aware but now I'm aware I can look it in the eye and go well it's okay it's it, you know it's it's all right but if mm. that's when I'm calm if I'm in it Leanne that all goes out the window and oh when you're in it you're in it the you're in it you're making stuff up you're not even aware you're making stuff up wouldn't that be lovely if we was going oh mm. this is just fear we'll be okay it doesn't work like that um no but what helped me is the awareness that actually um fear is stuff we make up um but it's not as simple it is stuff we make up mm. we, we think our feeling so when we have a thought, we feel it. Then we, we some people may think in images. So you get a movie screen pop up. And then before you know it, you know, like, out of that, no, I'll leave it today. Do you know what? <laughs> yeah. I'll do. yeah, before you know it, there's a movie going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, um, you know, um, it can come in so many different ways, can't it? Fear when other people say stuff to you as well. When I've read stuff, from the news I don't watch the news anymore because it would cripple me um mm. you know I'd been this very small world thinking um that what people said in the media or social media or blah 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 of people <gasps> that's so true yeah. and um I would really believe it um, and make up my own little world now that we're small that we're only we're really small and we're out of control but when I realise, no, we're not out of control. As long as you trust yourself, you'll be all right. Yeah, well, if that goes back into it. No, you're absolutely bang on. It is trusting yourself, having faith in yourself and your decisions and stuff. Um, but it's, it's very difficult when you're, like, projection from others on outside influences, as you say, what come up when you said about the movie and everything else, is, is that we are caught in like the fear that, you know, we won't go into it too much because I don't want to get into politics and what's going on with the world. No. Um, but that is fearful. It's, it's mainstream propaganda, projecting fear onto humanity through a black box called TV, phones on social media, radio with like synchronized like um, messages. Um, it's all a fear-based programming. Um, and then you take it on and it's unconscious, isn't it? It's that unconscious programming of stuff yeah. if you choose to choose to listen to it. And I think people do, um, not on purpose, but we innocently forget that we have choice. So if we, if we can change, if you want to change something, it's taking the choice to change something and dropping that fear to go fearlessly forward anyway. Um, you know, that, and that basically is that thing, isn't it? Like when, when um, oh, I lost my thread then, there was something else I wanted to say to you. Talk about the media and how oh, we yeah. the unconscious <laughs> go with it. Yeah, yeah. so like a little, little mind bomb went off because of media. Um, yeah, so... Um, it's, it's very, it's, it's about trust, going back to, oh, that's it. And it's going back, oh, thank you. <laughs> just goes to show it's all just live. Um, but it goes back into that faith of trusting yourself. When you go inside and you listen to that intuition, wisdom, whatever you want to call it, and you find you, your breath calms down, you're not in your intellect and you really do calm and then you see, you, you feel the fear going and you see actually what's the worst that can happen. Yeah. I'm going to choose to do this. And that's when the fear drops because you make a decision and everything else. Um, but that can keep that fear holds you in that your comfort zone, really. We're all yeah. in our reality. We're going along in life and we do this and we do that. As long as I'm all right, Jack, blah, 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 blah. blah. And then you have an idea that, or there's something to do. And then the fear comes in because it's taking you out of your comfort zone of your norm um and that's where you have to take that leap of faith for me it's taking that leap of faith um we've done told, talked about this before face the fear and do it anyway 
that is getting into the, yeah. that is that is going into the sea that is getting up and doing your podcast that's it even though you have fears and and insecurities about it it's about just doing it anyway and having the strength and courage to just say blast it <laughs> i'm gonna do it anyway yeah, i don't want to swear <laughs> They just swear you're just being you. We swear. It's no, look, my dog is really my dog is really making a lot of noise at the door, and I need to just give him something. Is that okay? Well, yeah, of course you know, can. Of course you can. Um, where where did I put it though, Haley? Where did you? My backup plan. I got it. You got it. Yeah. Listen, my, my dog my dog sitter is in the bathroom and uh so now <laughs> the dog's bored and back at my door um and yeah that could have been you could have made stuff up but you didn't you just went and done it so um as you was talking i had two examples actually um excellent one as a parent and one um as we had a discussion about originally doing this podcast um so when we, you know, you said you have an idea and then you uh, start to make up stuff. If we were just to go, mm. do you know, we're just going to do it and go with it. So when we first had the chat, I don't know how long ago now, a year ago, maybe. Yeah. But yeah. So when we first had the chat about us doing a podcast, I was like, oh, oh my God, I'd have to get all the equipment. I'd have to, um, you know, um, no, that's fine. We have to leave that for now because I've got the money for that. Um, I've got the experience and then um, but there was something stronger bringing me forward to just ask the right people the right questions and it was simple it was just on a zoom you know just on a zoom mm. the right equipment will come at the right time um, oh we will have the right equipment at the right time we will we microphones we... I want those big microphones come on oh them. come on I so want one of those microphones <laughs> we'll be like you know we well see them don't you like Lee, russell brown they've all got the microphones now the proper mic yeah <laughs> i want the big mic um <laughs> Sorry, we'll have a studio yeah we have a studio we have just seen like oh no you can see josh's gold post in the back there <laughs> but yeah no but um i went so into a story that um this podcast might never have happened of making things up people will go there that what are they doing get them to off or what's she doing mm. I actually weren't thinking of you I was like get her off um you know why was I thinking this when I just you know but it, like you say you, you're so in it um you don't see the rational side you don't you don't see that rational side when you're in it um so that was one example the other one as a parent was um my youngest was um on Monday was going into school and he looked really sad um and a couple of the other mums went oh god he looked really sad and I thought oh he don't want to go to school anymore I'm gonna have to start homeschooling him um I'm gonna um have to give up this give up that um because I, I you know he comes but and what about if he gets really depressed what about when he's 15 he's depressed what about if what about, what about, what about? And actually two days later, he was absolutely fine. He just Monday morning, he didn't want to go in. Um, he'd been <laughs> used to being off. Um, he was absolutely fine. And I was like, isn't that madness how I was really in that, um, that story, that illusion. Um, mm -hmm. when, when I see it for what it is, he was just a little boy that didn't want to go to school. Yeah, and he is, and you do feel sad. But I love the way you just changed your whole life. I know. Just, that's so, it. You're, just to so that your son can be happy. And that is it. That's that is it. it when you're in that. Yeah. Especially as a parent. Mm. Parents, yeah, and parents do it often. They see their children sad or, uh, oh, that's it. They're going to be, they're going to end up in prison when they're older or, um, you know, um, they're going to Again, be with the wrong crowd it's ridiculous because it's but it's not ridiculous because when you're in it it feels so real um but luckily I've like the more self-aware you become I think you can pull yourself out of it quicker I do think that absolutely more, yeah so as before, yes yeah, so if this happened 10 years ago I might have been in it for weeks and months and made so much stuff up that yes 
Mm. It's picking up on my energy, you know, but um, now I can pull <laughs> myself out of it quicker and go, no, no, you're making stuff up, you know, but that yeah. is, that's, and that's a, a comfort for me now, like recognizing mm. that that is not, and, you know, if I wasn't aware of fear and what it does and how the mind works, I could have rolled with that for months. And it's a, it is like, it's like this popped in my head when he said about Josh feeling sad. Oh, sorry. That's all right. Forget the I name. name before. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. Um, um, yeah, safety aspect, Leanne. Well done. Um, like when, when we see our children sad or upset or whatever, we, we do go into like a rescuer. We need to save them because we're in fear of our children um, experience unhappiness. But we, as human beings, you know, we need to know all the emotions. We need to know what sadness is. We need, you know, so that, that we, we, so the awareness continues anyway. How do we, you know, everything's consciousness. So then, you know, but we, <laughs> distraction um so yes but we do so I, I just love the fact that you're so honest about the fact that you changed your whole life in a day until you actually found out the truth that Josh just didn't want to go to school it was Monday morning Monday morning and I heard actually but to a, but to a six-year-old that's you know that's their whole world it's like you know you know it's yeah. gonna be sad you know what I mean but yeah. they need to feel that you need to feel that emotion and then see that it's so temporary every emotion is so temporary yeah, unless we breathe life into into that and that's normally fear <coughs> and the fear is my child's unhappy yeah and, that's a big and then when we, we come out of the fear then the rationality comes in and we're like actually there's something I can do about this I can step into the space of actually being quite helpful and having a conversation <laughs> and actually finding yeah. out what the sadness was uh, yeah, because yeah, and that's, yeah. And when you're in that fear, you only see that. So just say fear was, I don't know, that um that that lovely picture in the background. Um and that would all I'd be focusing on. I wouldn't see anything around it, I wouldn't see mm. um anything around it, I'd only see that, you know. So all mm -hmm. I was seeing was this fear and this I didn't see anything else. But I think when you when you catch it, when you catch yourself and go, Oh, I'm in fear. I'm still in yeah. it. I can still feel it. Then you start to see a little bit more around it. And I think that's when you step into your awareness, you know, and it's not as intense, you know, like the same. Yeah. It's just you're just focused on there's nothing else here but that. There's nothing else around you. That's what I notice about fear. Yeah, when you, when you step out of connection, you step out, you're disconnected, you're, you step out of being true self. You know, it is that picture, like the darkness. Yeah, this this picture that you just oh, pointed yeah. out it gives me it gives me a great example. Right, so there was a really dark time in my life when I bought this picture, and actually it was um yeah really really sad. Uh, yeah, lots had happened, but I won't go into that. <laughs> Save it for another time. Um, and um, I had been in such a dark, dark fear based place, and. Then all of a sudden I made a change in my life and um, stepped into a new, a new, a new chapter. Um, and so that's the moon, so that's the light coming out of the dark. So it's very symbolic for me and the water yeah. in it as well, you know, because the water's always fluid and I'm big on water. Um, so that it really is um, quite significant. So that for me is about me stepping into the light and out of that fear and that yeah. darkness that completely um constrained my um me being um healthy me being my true self me stop me you know because I really went inside I really went inside and um had quite um I'd, you know pardon the cliche but quite an awakening really of there's another world out there, there's another life. And I had to like cling on to and go with it. And it was quite scary at the time. But so it, when you're facing the adversity of fear, it's just like, there's always light. It's always with you. It's just that we forget. We are that light. We're human beings, for goodness sake. 
we have that innate intelligence running through us so we are that we are light beings um but it's our mind that can take us back in when we disconnect from that and we all do it we all do it we all do it I mean yeah we all do it and um and I think that for you to step into that um you know for you to start to open up your awareness and step into that new chapter mm-hmm. I think you have to let go of a lot of stuff I think you have to let go of a lot of belief <laughs> um people have you know that's what it is yeah. it's letting go of belief yeah. that um that we that keep us crippled um yeah yeah so when you start to let go of um because it's normally a underneath all the surface level stuff with fear it normally comes back down to a main core belief whether it is I don't matter I'm not enough no. I'm um I can't trust myself or um I'm not worthy I'm worthless um I'm trying to think of other people's core beliefs um there's so many um, one of your previous core beliefs I'm trying to think of like core beliefs <laughs> Um, I think one of yours. I don't trust myself. Uh, uh, and that you're not important. I'm not important. Um, I'm not allowed to be happy. Um, so when we cling on I'm to sorry, this, me and you had a bucket loads of core beliefs that didn't work for us. <laughs> yeah, so the service level stuff, it's just, uh, oh, you know, Josh is unhappy. Um, that means mm. I'm going to have to give my job up. This is all surface level stuff. But when you actually grab your core belief and let go of that, I think that's when you can um, step into a new world and start to see so much more. Um, because fear is, uh, no, I'm, be very careful how I say this, fear is an illusion, um, but it, it feels so real when we're in it. So I don't want to take the importance of when we're in it, but it is actually an illusion. Now, apart from obviously fear of fight, if you're in it, you go, you know, if I'm crossing a road yeah. and the car is here, I'm going to go into fight, flight, or not freeze. <laughs> Oh, hit me um yeah gonna... <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's rational that's yes yeah, so that is the rational that's yeah it. that is the but, rational yeah so if i got stepped off the pay the pavement stepped onto the pavement and then started making up what if what if the car what could have happened oh what could have happened yeah oh my god like um i could have been paralyzed or um i you know um oh so much stuff you make up I think when you let go of the belief, say if I let go of, I do trust in myself and I really do trust in myself, I think a lot of the fears would, they'd still be here, but bigger fears would now come rather than little ones. Mm. That's my understanding as well. Yeah, and I, and I think as well, when you do do that work on yourself and you're, you know, you know, I don't want to sound like cliche captions, but it's so bloody true. When you do step into the realms of healing, and you, your awareness and your consciousness grows um, because you see things through, through, through new eyes, then those old beliefs, especially when you step into the realms of getting help, whether it's transformation, um, you know, healing, whatever you do, personal development, da, 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 counseling, whatever. Um, so um, whatever works. Um, so when you, you in, then those beliefs sometimes you don't even know that those beliefs have just totally fallen away. They no longer serve you. So then it, it's, an, it's another day, isn't it? But, you know, then we, you know, the, when we make more shit up, like, you know, make more beliefs up, um, new beliefs, um, that's what's disabling. It disables you. But if you really, the more, the more understanding you have on self, the more we go inside, the more we understand how human beings truly truly work um it's just so beautiful because you you really do see all the stuff that you make up all the stuff that we truly um has kept us like um this psychological suicide in the mind and it's all in the mind and it's nothing to do with the physical oh no all those, all, yeah all those beliefs and everything else that like layers and layers and layers and layers and layers um so, um, yeah, so I just, um, I've always um, personally had courage, but even though having that courage in, um, I, it's all right, you know, I can take it. <laughs> I can take it because I'm strong. 
oh my god um so therefore that's actually kept me in situations that weren't healthy for me but I didn't have the fear for myself it was more fearful actually to face the fear to be happy because the 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 bad stuff was normalized so it kept me there so that's another way of fear that fear works because you normalize your situation and then the thought of actually happiness if, you, if, you, if you're not working on the awareness and the understanding of yourself, you know, that you, 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 you get fearful of actually that, that happiness, ultimate happiness, which is an inside job anyway. So, yeah, so it's weird how, how it can both, like, you know, how it disables you in, in so many areas to, uh, to progress and go forward. And, you know, how you were just talking about the fear of happiness, I just had one one thought of a client that um you know he's a bit um a secondary gain so yeah, um yeah. so my, one of my clients was really uh bloody courageous like really self-aware that said um do you know what i've just realized i've been using my um depression she said I'd, i've had depression for 15 years and then she realized that i've used my depression as a secondary gain because if i let go of the depression I have a fear that people will not be there for me anymore because while she's in depression, people run around and really try and heal, like rescue her, etc. So she had a, a like if if she let go of the depression, um, people won't be there for her anymore, and then she'd be responsible for her choices and her life and happiness. Um, and she mm. wasn't ready for that. So obviously, when she become aware of it, she realised how much she was making up because she realised all she had to do was when she let go of it, ask for what she needed. Just ask. Do you know what? I need a little, <laughs> I need a little bit of help. Oh, it, it kept her crippled for years. It's, um, oh, I can't let go of it. She didn't realise she couldn't let go of it. She just um, was going along with this. But yeah, that was what she... People use anxiety as a secondary gain because, you know, um, I can't because of my anxiety. Um, mm-hmm. um yeah, no, I can't. I don't like driving into London or going into London because of my anxiety. And it's really, it's really sad because it's what they, you know, what people don't really see is that's just a uh, a fear of normally happiness, responsibility. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's starting to be, um, and it's all the fear. It's all the fear. No, it is a fear and asking for help. It reminds me of my story. Do you remember? Uh, <laughs> when I started in the realms of her uh, helping myself. So um, for those that don't know, shall I quickly tell it? Or, I don't know if I've mentioned it before. Tell huh? it, Leanne. Tell it. Okay. Tell it. So I was, I, yeah, right. Going to do it. Have no fear. Right, yeah. So basically, <laughs> excuse me. Right, so um, I'm registered blind. I do have sight. Um, and um, I... Um, wouldn't ask for help. How's that working out for you, Leanne? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't think it is. Anyway, so um, when I uh, embarked on a course with a mutual friend of ours, and I used to work with him called Greg, um, it's, so I remember sitting in in uh, in the chair, and he's and he's gone to me. So my cousin had, was doing a short film short film festival in London. And I desperately wanted to go to support him. He's a beautiful, beautiful man. And uh, yeah, so my cousin was uh, doing it and I just wanted to be involved. I wanted to see his work. I wanted to see his short film and da, 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 da. And, was, and I was like, but I can't go. No, no, I can't get there. I can't get there because I'm registered blind. And no one was going from um, here, like this, this part in Essex. So I was like, oh my God, so I can't get a lift. So then all the obstacles of the fear and blah, 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 blah. So anyway, so then I remember this, uh, I remember Greg saying to me, so uh, what about the train? <laughs> they go into London all the time. I can't get the train because I won't be able to see where I'm going. Rational, you may think. Valid yeah. excuse, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Keeping myself in the disabled brackets. Yeah, if you saw me walking around, no one would even know that I've got sight impairment, a severe sight impairment. So um, anyway, so then the joke was, you know, those big white circular things on the wall with a big red button in the middle that if you press that, you get assistance. (laughs) 
So then I was trying to hide behind my hair or get a bit of paper and go, oh my God, I'm really embarrassed. So the fear of the journey had actually stopped me thinking yeah. rationally of how could I actually do this? And the way I could do that would actually go to the ticket office, produce evidence that I'm registered blind, which I have, and actually ask for assistance. And then guess what? So what happened was that it, that fear went because I was exposed to um, option because I had someone challenging me on there's another way yeah. and then I couldn't hide. And then, yeah, so then it was just like, OK, so, OK, you can get the train. But what if I get the wrong train? Then I'm going to end up with someone I don't know. And the fear would cripple me. Um, so, yeah, so then I went to <laughs> Leon C train station and went, Oh, can I have a ticket to Finchley, please? And can I have some assistance on the train because I'm actually ready to go? She's like, yeah, no problem. Hang on a minute. Get somebody, takes me, puts me behind the driver carriage, sitting on the train, got to West Ham, some, somebody else in a, in a fluorescent jacket got me, walked me through the station, put me on another train, got to the next stop. <laughs> another person got me. I was like that. Oh, my God. Anyway, I got there um, and... Um, I went to see my cousin's film festival, which I absolutely loved. It was absolutely buzzing. Um, and I never had a fear of traveling again. Then that, then all I have to do is ask. And all I had to do was ask. I was totally um, keeping myself a prisoner in my mind, <laughs> all by not asking for help that was actually rightfully mine, because I do have a disability and there are people there that really want to help people. <laughs> So yeah, so that fear crippled me and that that was eight years ago. Wow. Eight, nine years ago, yeah. So look at that fear, what, 47 now? So my late 30s. But then you would have, you know, this is, you'd have carried on making stuff up. Oh, I, 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 I was the queen of making stuff up. I had a crown and everything. Yeah, we all do it. We all do it. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. the king of it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that that whole mm. fear-based illusion was keeping me trapped. And I had there was no bars. All I had to do was ask for help. Oh well, and then you know, like you said, it, when you see it, it when you see it in the for what it was, that's when you let go of the fear. But you yeah, and also, so hats off to your hats off to the lady that's your client because as you were telling that story, that really um, moves me because now she hasn't got a secondary gain. She knows she can't use it, and yes. yeah, and, and she's now, got yeah. out of that depression, and she can see it for what it truly is, and then she can connect, and then she can live her life. So that's absolutely amazing to hear. Oh, and get, and then so many things change for her after that. Mm, of course in such an amazing way and this is what um yeah so um say yes to fear just say yes to it just say yes to it yeah just welcome yeah. it but it's all right just say yes to it but still because we often ask for things i heard someone say this recently we ask for things and then we like we fantasize about things and then it, it comes and we go no 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 wait we don't want it yeah yet. But if we yeah. go, do you know what? Yes, I say I've asked for it, and look, look, it's coming. And just say yes to it. Yeah, like you know, when I do, when I do my, my work that I do, you know, it's just like um, like in transformation, it's just like um, people really want to do something or achieve something or change their um beliefs um, and patterns of behaviour that doesn't serve them anymore. They guess the oh, I'd love to do that. Or oh, what's what's stopping you? They go, well, obviously me. And I'm like, no, but what's truly stopping you? What's the language you're using to stop you doing okay. that? And then it all exposes and it all comes out and it's just like, well, that is the stuff you're making up all the time. And that's what disables us, isn't it? And it's, it's all fear-based. Yeah, and it's never, when we actually see it for what it is, it's not as scary as we ever thought it would be. That's what I oh, think. no, it never is. The reality of when you actually go to do something that you've been fearing, it never, never is, is it? No, when you actually see it for what it is, oh, and then we let go of a lot mm. without even realising it. Yeah, all that illusions are powerful, really powerful. Oh, it really is, yeah. So, yeah. Mm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there was you saying that I'd covered it all in the first three minutes, and now we've been talking for how long? 
Uh, we've been talking for I don't know actually. It doesn't matter. Um, it yeah, doesn't no, matter. that's um. Thank you for sharing that, Leanne. You're welcome, my darling. Um, but like you know, the whole idea of these conversations, the whole idea of us getting out there on a social platform, having these chats, um, is to help people. That is it. Full stop. There's nothing else to add. Um, if someone can relate to it. Um, and then yeah. go, oh my god, I do that, and then they can let go of some stuff. Yeah, it's to, it's just to mm. raise the awareness, isn't it? It's to raise the awareness because I wasn't aware of this. If I'd have no. seen a podcast on this when I was um, making up stuff that I was shy or nervous or uh, not confident, I wouldn't have seen it. Was actually I was fear. I'd have mm. just thought well, it's part of my personality because I got told that yeah, you've always been a bit shy, like that's who you are, and yeah, um, it's not actually true. No, I think no. you're shy. No, no. You're not now. <laughs> but I'd make it up, but it's really fear that was crippling me, just fear. Um, yeah, well, I, you know, I'm like setting out my own, doing me, starting my own business and stuff like that. And, you know, that's, that's, that, that, that fear was keeping me. That was a fear of mine, you know. And now it's happening. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Happening. Now it's happening. I'm independently going to work and help people one by one. Um, yeah, so you know, it's, it's, it's everything when you look at it. Yeah, interesting though, isn't it? Someone, who is it? Joseph something said, um, the cave Joseph you fear something. To, I don't know his surname, he's, he's done a good quote. The cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. So when you actually go into the fear and go through it, it's it's lovely. Yeah, well, what is the opposite? Like for me, the opposite of the fear opposite is. Of fear is love yes it's love. Is love and that's what that's who our true nature we are that love and when we're in love there's no fear when you love yeah someone, absolutely there's no fear in love oh, no yeah no no i do it with robin sometimes i go oh i really love you robin like little dog um and um but when she's um jumping fences or something i go into fear and go oh the, the little cow but if i was in fear i began it's okay and if i was in love i began it's okay you jump the fence what we do is we'll get larger fences for you i don't do that when, <laughs> doing it. when i'm not in fear i'm making up stuff and what would she do to other people's gardens what about if she escapes blah, blah, blah. um but we we actually did get <laughs> she hasn't even got over the other side of the fence <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's just sitting there staring at me <laughs> What's she talking about? Just give me a biscuit or something. <laughs> yeah, feed me. <laughs> but yeah, so are we? I, I, I didn't think of this before, but are we doing the funniest thing that we've seen or heard this week? I can't even. Think oh of my god! I haven't. Um, let's have I a haven't little thought. Bit. The funniest thing that I've seen or heard. Uh, I've done lots of funny things myself and yeah. laughed at myself a lot. <laughs> that could be it. One of them, one of them, a photo shoot down um, um, with a lovely Bobby um, down in um, Chalkwall, trying to get some profile and some like you know some um, upstate photos to go on social platforms and stuff is what I'm doing now and um, and it was the <laughs> so like done my hair and makeup and everything. And the sun was out. I was like, yeah, I want to get down by the sea. I want water in it. I want you know da da da. Um, my favourite place, like you know beach and that. And um, and then I've gone down there and I had this vision of having my like shark for scarf and I've been like, yes, like with it, you know, yeah. like in the back. And it just got, it was so windy. My hair oh. just blew, my eyes are streaming where it's so windy. And, but she still managed to take some shots. I tell you, she's really good. And um, so we just fell about laughing, talking about don't take yourself seriously. That was funny. Oh, that's amazing. People just walking. And people just walking past going, weirdos. <laughs> yeah, so you had this like lovely expectation perception of how it might be. Oh my god, and I went into the original. Yeah. It's sunny, it's gonna be sunny, it's gonna be beautiful and everything. It was freezing bloody cold, the wind yeah. was whipping, and and it was so unglamorous, uh, seriously, but we had such a crack, it was brilliant. So I made myself laugh. That's so, yeah, yes, but I had to, I, I, um, government, I think they've sounded rather silly. <laughs> oh yeah, just a bit. 
funniest thing I've heard all week is all of a sudden, um, yeah, restrictions get dropped, it all disappears, and uh, COVID, COVID, what's COVID? Oh, I know, I was in the opticians <laughs> yesterday, having an eye test, and I thought, God, isn't this interesting how today it's really serious, serious, and everyone's wearing their masks, but on Mondays, no one has to wear a mask. How does that work? <laughs> all of a sudden, two days, it's all, you're, you're safe now, and I was like, this is so interesting. Oh, interesting and really funny. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny. Um, I don't think I can think of something. Things have been quite serious. <laughs> um, well, don't worry about it then. No, no, I can't. Um, I can't think of one. The funniest thing I've, I bet I'll, I'll remember after. <laughs> yeah, it'll be hilarious. I'll be laughing on my own. <laughs> You don't have to. You don't yeah. have to think of the funniest I can't thing. I think of the funniest thing I've seen or heard this week. I did see something funny yesterday. Do you want to talk about it? <laughs> well, it's, it might be one of them ones that, you know, like when people go, you're on your own. So I was at KFC with Megan and they had a chicken on the outside of the building, like, you know, painted to the wall. And I was mm -hmm. like, that chicken is trying to escape from KFC. <laughs> Don't cook me. But yeah, that's one of the funniest things. <laughs> yeah, it's one of them ones. I, I find it hilarious. I was really like very nice. <laughs> one of those things when did I just say that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> that's all that's that's a picture of a chicken. It's a picture of a chicken looking like he wants to run away from KFC. <laughs> I'm still funny, funny. So, Leanne, um, <laughs> are we done? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> We're going to leave I'm it on fine, the with the chicken. Just... <laughs> <laughs> the chicken. Huh. Did it have two breasts or three? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, let's hmm. leave it on that. Anyway. <clears throat> okay. Serious face. Serious. Um, yeah, so if um, if people can please like, share, and uh, comment if you resonate. Um, again, if anyone wants to come on and share their experiences with anything they've with uh, shared on our podcast, please do. We'd love to have you on, wouldn't we, Leanne? Yeah, we would. Like, we just um, I think yeah, we want to start having some guests about their own experiences, or if there's anything that's um. You know, just been just been brought up for them, or yeah, put them on the comments down below. Yeah, and yeah, please subscribe, share. You can find us on YouTube, Anchor, um, Facebook. Yes. And, um, and thank you very much for listening. Yes, thank you for listening. Lovely doing a podcast with you, Miss Leanne, again. Always a pleasure, Hayley. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye, bye. Bye.